Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medic Foundation plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I wanted to dive into um, basement walls and actually the framing that goes on uh, inside basement walls or within basements actually. So let's go ahead and start out just here throwing down a grid. We're going to make just a really small uh, basement. Okay and then we'll go ahead and use the stem wall polyline tool and we're just going to draw ourselves a nice little basement wall. So one thing to be aware of when you're drawing basement walls, um, if you want to get a specific stud height, um, you know, within your basement, you obviously need to do a few calculations. So usually what I do is, you know, I'll start with like a 97 and uh, eighth as my uh, typical stud wall height for an eight foot wall. And then what you need to do basically is you need to add four inches for your slab um, and then subtract one and a half inches for your seal plate. Okay, so then basically what you end up with is, uh, I think I've written that down here, a stem wall height of 99.625. Okay, so that should get us to the right stud wall height. All right, let's go ahead and uh, just quickly draw uh, a rectangle here. We're just going to do something really small just to demonstrate what, what we're doing here. All right, and then hit enter. Okay, so there's our uh, our basement wall. And then uh, basically we want to just throw a slab in there. So let's just go ahead and draw a slab. I'm sure a rectangle will work. I'm just going to hit grab these corners. Okay, and we'll just leave a defaults in here. We're just going to leave the slab reinforcement off for now, just so things go really snappy. Okay, and then um, what I'm going to do is push this slab down to the bottom there and so what I typically just do is I'll just go like this grab it corner right there and then um, sometimes it's a little tricky to get everything where you want it but uh, I'll just put a drop it right there I think that was six six inches so basically um, Actually, you know, we kind of messed that up, I think, because we shifted everything over. That's all right. So we got we dropped it down six inches, but then we got four. So we'll we'll bring it back up. Uh, we'll bring it right back up to ten inches, actually. And uh, kind of actually select the slab to move it. Right. Okay. So we'll bring it up. Um, there we go. Ten inches. Okay, and then we just need to shift this guy over. I think we accidentally shifted it three inches this way, three inches that way. Sorry, I'm not as efficient as I probably should be. Yeah, we have three inches there, and then three inches that way. Okay. All right, so now we've got ourselves a slab inside of our stem wall, essentially. So that will, you know, form the basis of your, your foundation and, of course, your basement, right? So what I like to do now is... Um, Actually, I'm going to just go ahead and put a little face on top of this slab. And you'll see the reason why, where, where it meets the wall. So I think we've got ourselves a face now. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and hide that uh, foundation wall for now. We don't need that. Okay, so now we've got ourselves, in fact, we'll just go ahead and hide that as well. Uh, come on, hide. So we've got ourselves our slab, and of course our walls will all sit on top of that. So now, the, the whole point of this video, of course, is I want to explain what I typically like to do when I'm creating uh, basement walls inside, framing basement walls inside of your basement. So what I suggest, and you know, you, there are different ways to do this, is I would suggest framing, I mean, if you're going to have this fully framed out, you're obviously going to want to frame next up next to the uh, stem wall itself, right? And I suggest actually framing that those as exterior walls, and you'll see why here in a second. But before we do that, we're going to use this little offset uh, tool, and we're just going to jump on this face here, and I'm going to offset in a half inch. 
And what that does is that gives me my air gap between my framing and my concrete because you don't want that, you know, framing obviously sitting right up against your uh, concrete. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and do this. And we'll want to do um, exterior an exterior wall. But again, with the exterior wall, um, we'll just go ahead and do two by fours. Update that, and we're going to do standard kind of stud wall height, so it'll be 97 and an eighth. With this, we're going to go ahead and turn off our wall sheathing, and we're going to turn off our wall cladding, so there won't be any wall sheathing or cladding. And gypsum's fine, of course. Go ahead and update on that, and then just start here and go ahead and reference right now to this uh, this line, the inset line, right? And then drag yourself over here and go ahead and grab that corner. Notice I've got the geometry marks turned on. Um, I like to have those turned on when I'm modeling walls just so I can kind of track better where my wall ends and my wall begins. So notice that it's red and that's the wall end and then the wall start will be a green little shaded circle. Okay, as we come back around you'll see what I'm talking about. So we go right to that point. And then everything frames out properly. All right, let's go ahead and turn our gypsum off real quick um, just so we can see things better and also reference to our framing a little better, right? Okay, and now that is when I begin my actual interior framing because now that I've got this perimeter set up, um, then everything else is going to kind of frame into that, right? So let's go ahead now and... Uh, We'll just go ahead and create, you know, randomly kind of create some extra walls in here. Now, now we're going to switch to interior walls. Click update on that. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously sheathing, cladding doesn't matter. We've got some gypsum turned on. Um, let's just go ahead and drop. Uh, I don't know. We can put it anywhere. I was going to put it right at the center, but for some reason I can't find the center of this wall. But it's here somewhere. Doesn't really matter. We'll just grab right there. Um, you know, maybe you're framing a bathroom, whatever, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter for this purposes of this uh, video, but um, you know, we'll stretch out here and then we're going to tie it back in. Notice I touched the wall, right? I got to, to get this to actually form that T connection, I got to get right against the framing. So frame, framing to framing, and that will create that connection automatically, right? And, and that is, like I said, again, the reason for these um, geometry markers, because you really need to make sure you got a clean uh, you know, setup. Otherwise, if things aren't matching up properly, then the plugin can't figure out, okay, yeah, that wall's connected to that other wall. Okay, so that, that's pretty, pretty much what I wanted to show you guys. You know, turn the gypsum back on, and see, now we've got ourselves our, um, our interior framing pretty much complete. Let's go ahead and unhide um, all everything here. Okay, so now you can see that you've got your interior framing and you've got your um, concrete. Everything's lining up nicely. Let's go ahead and add a window in here just for uh, a bit of a study purposes, I suppose. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop that right. Well, let's put it right here. It doesn't matter, I guess. Okay. So this is um, framed into this wall, right? Um, now, typically when you're doing framing of windows into foundations, you're not going to put the actual window within the uh, frame portion, right? So let's go ahead and use the uh, window tool here, opening tool actually, for going to switch that to window. Okay, we got 36 uh, header height, 84. I can't remember if this is right or not, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on the, uh, we'll, we'll leave the buck off for now, the window buck. Uh, actually, no, the window well, we want the buck. Um, turn that off, turn that on. Okay, let's go ahead and install that window into the foundation. All right. So we did it. Uh, I think we we're lined up on that mark right there. Let's see here. Well, let me update that. Oh, we didn't set this. We meant that opening height to be actually 48 inches. Yeah, it was set for a door. Okay, go ahead and hit that. Okay, so now we're lining these two up. 
again, um, yeah, that, that's correct. We've got our window placed within that uh, buck, the window buck, they call it, and everything looks good. Now, of course, we have a window here. So what we want to do is actually turn this window off, um, right? We don't need to install the window near the framed opening. So we'll modify that. In fact, I should have did that initially, but I uh, wasn't thinking, I guess. Turn the window off. We want to have actually the exterior trim turned off, and we want to have the uh, installation of the window. So just the interior casing, right? And also, I need to, um, let's see. Oh, I need to turn off the, uh, I want to change that header. That's not good. Let's just throw a couple 2 by 6s in there. Okay. Actually, I had the wrong thing pressed there. Uh, we actually want to edit that opening, not draw a new one. Uh, so let's go ahead and edit that opening. And where did I see which one? There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, let's go ahead and turn on a couple of 2x6 headers. Let's turn off the window installation, turn off the exterior trim. We just need the interior casing turned on. All right. Okay, so there we go. And of course, we can adjust the casing depth, you know, so everything line, it doesn't extend all the way back in, but we can actually change that, uh, the jam extension depth. So let's say, for instance, I don't know what it is offhand. I'd have to actually measure it. I think six inches is pretty close, but we're just a little shy. So we can go stretch that out. Uh, obviously, that's too much. I, like I said, I need to actually measure that to know what that should be. Uh, that's probably. 6.75, I'm going to assume. It's going to get us pretty close. Yeah, actually, I think we nailed it. All right, so there we go. There's our full um, full window casing and everything. Um, yeah, um, like I said, you've basically... So when you're doing windows in basement walls or doors, you're going to essentially insert the door or window in, into the um, concrete and you've got these tools right here with the foundation plugin and then you're going to actually insert the openings again into the framed wall portion but you're not going to actually insert the exterior trim or any uh, of the actual doors or windows themselves so you kind of have to duplicate work um, I don't have it so it automatically detects um, you know the framing is independent of the concrete itself but um, but yeah, it's not really that hard to do. And then, you know, you can move these independently of each other. You can move the framed opening over. You can move over the concrete opening. But yeah, everything should line up like that, and then you should be good to go. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's kind of what you got to do with windows and basement walls. And again, I like to frame these as exterior walls around the perimeter. And then, of course, regular interior walls for the interior. So yeah, I, I typically don't like to use the interior wall option for the uh, ones that go along the perimeter and the reason is because you're going to get gypsum on both sides of the wall and of course you don't want gypsum on the inside or the uh, on this side of the wall that faces the concrete and again um, as you can see everything should have adjusted correctly and we have perfectly now uh, this uh, seal plate height so let's go ahead and throw a floor on there just to check that so i'm going to go ahead and click the floor and then we'll just throw some eye joists on there. Yeah, sure, everything looks pretty good. So we'll just wrap around this, kind of to finish this off, and then hopefully we don't make this video too long. Yeah, so we'll go ahead. We start it back here, right? Yep. Okay, yeah, her joists are going the wrong way. Oh, we forgot to put a seal plate. Okay, so see, see now, if that if you didn't have a seal plate, obviously that, that wall height is too high, right? Because we raised it up one and a half inches. Um, but if we edit this real quick and turn on our seal plate, as we would expect, and then hit update on that, and then swap our studs or joists around just because they're going the wrong direction. All right, so now everything is as it should be. Again, we've got an inch and a half seal plate, and our top of our wall, you know, bears right there is uh, sitting right there, nice and snug up against those joists. And we've got a four-inch slab. Uh, let me zoom out here. I hate it when that happens. Oh, man, 
I am not having much luck. But anyways, um, yeah, there we go. So interior, uh, you know, framing uh, those walls inside those basements. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's fairly straightforward. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. And thank you so much for all your support.